Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. Welcome to part six of the 420cc Predator powered mini articulating dump truck. So, last video, we we're sorting out some of this hydraulic stuff. Got the pump mounted, the steering wheel, stuff like that. And this is still fresh in my mind. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do here. We're going to get this thing working by the end of the video. In the meantime, right now, I'm actually going to do some gussets, get my mind off the hydraulics for a bit because it needs to be all stout before I actually turn in this thing anyways. Some gussets on the cross member, things like that. And I'm running short on my 3 16 metal. And actually a good time to plug a video. This is some salvage stuff I have. There's a little video I'll post up here on where to salvage cheap to free metal when there's not a virus going on. The metal shop I usually salvage from and buy my metal from is shut down right now. In the meantime, we're going to go back to the old style angle grinder and start cutting some stuff and gussing out this part of the frame. So let's get going on this build.
got the hydraulic tank all finished. I'm happy to have this done. Cut some more hanger brackets and weld them on off camera here. We're gonna be mounting this thing up right up here by the steering wheel. Just gotta drill and tap a little hole on the side. And because I wanna drive this thing at the end of the video, all my hub hangers are all spot welded on and I don't want a wheel falling off. I know some of you guys thumbs down my video, you'd probably get a hell of a kick out of that, but I don't want a wheel falling off on this thing. So I'm not ready to commit to welding the hub hangers out 100% in case I gotta change anything. But they got pretty stout tack welds on here. I'm gonna go over and beef them up a little bit more. And we're just gonna be putting around a little bit. But uh, anyways, we're gonna get welding that next. want to have this thing moving for before the end of the video here and one of the most important things more than actually having it move is actually having it stop so I have a bunch of brake components that I've ordered and I'm matching just piecing stuff together for this system and I think it's gonna work out pretty well but right now we're gonna be working on the rear driveline brake and I ordered some double piston Yamaha Rhino calipers we're gonna put back here but I actually have to pull off this rotor that I salvaged and cut my own Fusion 360 on the plasma table and cut some brackets so we're going to draw those up next and cut them. I've had a lot of people mention in the video that they think this driveline brake is a bad idea that I'm cutting corners. I'm building this thing. I know what the needs are for this machine. I'm going to be running around my property. I know it's going to be 100% adequate for this machine. I don't know if you guys are familiar or not with heavy equipment but there's a lot of heavy equipment that run center driveline brakes on them. It's super common. And I'm going to probably weld off the rear diff and make that solid anyways once I drive around here and see if the traction requirements are. One thing you guys may or may not know is going through this rear differential is about a 4 to 1 gear ratio change. When you got a disc brake or a drum brake out here and spinning that wheel that's a 1 to 1. So if it takes a 100 foot pounds of pressure to stop this thing, Grabbing it on this rear disc right here, it's a four to one gear ratio. It would take 25 pounds to stop that wheel. Hope that makes sense to you guys. All right, let's go cut out some parts. All the parts I ordered to hook up the hydraulics to get the steering working and the brake system, I think I can couple together to make a good brake system here, showed up. This is kind of funny, I was looking around for manual parking brakes and still have to order a cable off of like golf carts and everything like that. Found this little assembly for like drift cars, it's like a drift car parking brake, so that should work out pretty good, that was like 40 bucks. Got a bunch of brake lines and stuff. We almost forgot a simple tiny part that would have been crucial to get this thing working. A $5 throttle cable. I almost forgot to order that, so I got that here. Would have been a shame to get it going and have to run it with the string. So anyways, we're going to start hooking this hydraulics up and hopefully get the steering. Let's start hooking up the hydraulics now. All right, you guys, pardon my little paint station here. I was doing some painting on some of this stuff. So here is my hydraulic pump I got for free. Just had to put a seal in it. 
and I got an orbital steering valve for free. The problem is these two components are not best suited for each other. So I got to modify this to make it run with the orbital valve. So what's going on here is this pump was kind of a clever design as long as you have the whole system. I don't know a ton about hydraulics, but the research I've realized that this is a priority valve on the back of it. It's got two main outputs. The larger one is for your hydraulics on a forklift to raise the mass and all that stuff. And the smaller port is for steering. And this third port on the side, this tiny one, is like a pilot actuator. And the orbital valve, the one I have is a four port and you need a five port to run this thing. What happens is your hydraulics for your mass and all your machinery works off this main port. It's got priority until you go to steer it. And when you start to steer, the fluid comes in this little side valve here on the fifth port of the orbital shuts this hydraulic line off here, this output, and then gives it full priority to the steering. We don't got that orbital valve, so I gotta make do. I'm gonna pull these parts out. I'm gonna keep them around in case I come across the fifth port uh, orbital valve, but for the time being, taking these out, we're gonna get installing this thing.
Well, hey guys, I'm super excited to get it to this point. I worked really hard to get it here for this video and it's so neat to actually be able to drive it around and try it out and uh, I'm really happy way it's working. It didn't break. Nothing broke on it so far on this test drive and that's a plus. So now I'm really confident I can go through and weld out all the suspension components in the next video. Um, well, a few things I'm going to change though actually is I'm going to reduce the speed of this pump. I'm going to actually put a smaller little pulley on the engine side to reduce the speed of the pump a little bit so it's not a one-to-one -one anymore. And the gearing, I kind of had my feeling about it, the four to one gear ratio from the motor to the transmission. I felt after seeing it test drive inside the shop with the wheel spinning, it felt like first gear was going to be too tall. First gear is fine, but second gear is okay. Third and up is not very usable. So four to one is definitely not going to cut it on here. So I'm actually going to order the parts to do a small jack shaft behind the, the motor right over here. So I can actually probably order enough stuff to do a six to one and an eight to one reduction just by playing around with sprockets and things. I'll be able to adjust it and I'll have all the gearing I need because I want to be able to utilize all five gears. Probably won't be using fifth around my property much, but I wouldn't mind it to do like on flat ground at 20 maybe in fifth but i want first gear to be creeping slow so you can put it in gear and tow a vehicle out of a ditch or anything like that so we're going to address that stuff on the next one the brakes turned out to be excellent i'm happy how that turned out keep in mind i'm not running the master cylinder from the subaru i ended up using some go-kart master cylinders because they had a smaller bore the master cylinder for the subaru had too big of a bore not to run it with a brake booster i want to get around that i want to simplify the system as much as i possibly can Parking brake works great. You can pull it on driving. It just skids in the yard, so it locks up the rear wheels no problem. The brakes work really well. It's a real good success in this video. And uh, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing so you can watch the rest of this build and see how it comes out and see it as a dump truck in the very end. And please, guys, do me a favor and give a thumbs up on this video. It helps it kind of rank so other people can see it. And leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear what you guys got to say. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.